The second condition we need to verify, assuming we have concluded that our populations have a linear trend, is that our residuals need to come from a normally distributed population. So keep in mind that residuals tell us about the error in our model. And we know that our predictions are never going to be perfect. Anytime we're making predictions about the future, unknown values, there's always going to be some amount of error in there. Sometimes we'll overestimate. Other times we underestimate. But what we want is to be, on average, making accurate predictions. So if sometimes we're a little bit over, sometimes we're a little bit under, that should be averaging out to mean that we're more or less making those accurate predictions. So residuals will be either positive or negative, depending on whether we're under or overestimating. So if on average we're making accurate predictions, then the average of our residuals, so again, keeping in mind, sometimes they'll be positive, sometimes they'll be negative, but hopefully relatively close to zero. So if we have a few positive values, a few negative values, averaging those out should average to zero. So if the average of our residuals is zero, it means our model is doing a good job of making predictions. But that still only tells us about the error in our sample data. So it tells us whether with the data that we have and that we know and can look at, our model is doing a good job of estimating those or not. So to verify that our predictions will be accurate for any value, so essentially again for the population, the entire population of our two variables, we'll assess the normality of our residuals. So to do this, we'll again turn back to the Shapiro-Wilk test to test the claim that our residuals come from a normally distributed population, which means we're testing the hypotheses that our sample data does come from a normally distributed population. That'll be our null hypothesis and the alternative that our data comes from a non-normally distributed population. So in this case, if we fail to reject our null hypothesis, then this condition about the normality of our residuals is met. But if we reject the null hypothesis, we're concluding the residuals are not normally distributed and the condition is not met. So that condition would fail. So at that point, we would again have a conclusion that our model is not valid. And at that point, we stop the regression process. There's no need to construct the regression model um, because it's a model that's going to give us inaccurate predictions, information we don't want to rely on. So again, there are more advanced statistical procedures that we could look at in a case like this, but for our purposes, we're looking at this one approach to regression. So when that condition fails, this process stops. So to verify that a linear model is valid, we can summarize this in sort of three basic steps. We need to calculate R, the correlation co coefficient, to verify the claim that our sample data shares a linear association. So we want to calculate that value for r and verify that r is close to negative 1 or 1. And again, keep in mind there's a lot of room for subjectivity in the middle there. Um, if you have values of 0 0.6, 0 0.4, negative 0.4, negative 0.6, there still might be a correlation. But if we had a value that was very, very close to 0, like 0 0.1, 0 0.002, there's a good chance there's no correlation so or no association, so we could just stop the process. So we just want to do a quick check to see if our sample data supports this idea of there being a correlation. Our value for R is also going to let us establish our hypotheses, 
when we test the claim that a linear association exists. So based off our value for R, we'll be able to establish the alternative hypothesis that the slope is either less than, greater than, or not equal to zero. But again, less than and greater than will be our two more typical choices. So assuming we conclude that the slope is somehow different than zero, then we'll test the claim that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. So assuming that all three of these conditions are met, or all three of these claims are supported, then we could say that our model is valid. If any of these claims are not supported, then our model is not valid and it doesn't really make any sense, again, to carry on with this regression process because we would be making predictions based off a model that's inaccurate, leading us to incorrect results.